Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. It's another day the Lord has made and gives us an opportunity to do something for Him. So if you're stuck somewhere in a icy conditions and you can't get out of the house, do some evangelism. Get on your computer and share the gospel message on your social media page. And send emails to people that you know. People who need the gospel. And don't tell me you don't know anybody who doesn't need the gospel because they're all around us. So do something for God today. And if you're able to get out and do what you can to share the message with others as you have the opportunity. All right, the title of the lesson today is Don't Blame Me, It's Not My Fault. I mean, that seems kind of strange, but that phrase is one of the most prolific excuses offered for any misdeed or sin. I mean, this all started back in the Garden of Eden. I mean, it started with the Adam, the first man. He pretty much said so when being interviewed by God after he ate the forbidden fruit. His response was, the woman that you gave me caused me to sin. In other words, what he was saying is, it's not my fault. So from the beginning, this has become a standard phrase and many have just put it into practice uh, and really it comes down to just about everybody. And let's face it, there's probably not a man or woman alive today who has not uttered these words at least once in their lives. And for many people, these words are uttered over and over. All right, the reason is because people would rather say this than to acknowledge their sin, acknowledge their iniquities and their shortcomings and their failures and their faults in their life. And it's hard for many to say that, oh, I was wrong, or I did that which I was not supposed to do, and, or I did not do what I was supposed to do. I mean, it's so much easier just to shift the blame and, and blame someone else or something else rather than acknowledge the fact, I didn't do it, or, or I, I, I didn't do it when I should have done it, or I shouldn't have done it, but I did it anyway. I, I mean, so however you want to put that into words. See, we just have to be careful that we are not guilty of the same sin. I mean, imagine a person in court telling the judge that the bullets that came out of the gun they were holding was not their fault. The gun failed to misfire, so it did, it's not my fault the other person was killed or injured. Can you imagine how that would stand up in court? <laughs> yeah, right. Imagine a person telling a judge that the light failed to change for them and running into another vehicle was not their fault. I mean, if that sounds absurd, I can just about guarantee that these arguments have been offered sometime in the past in a court of law somewhere. I mean, you, you, you see that. We read about statements like this all the time. I mean, they're, they're just some what meant to be humorous, but it's really sad that people put forth these kinds of arguments. So just imagine all the victims of society blaming everything on someone else and they are not responsible for their crimes. Well, we do not have to imagine because we see it every day in our world. We see it taking place. People are doing things they know are wrong, but they're trying to put the blame somewhere else. It's not my fault that I'm committing the crime. So that's what they do. <coughs> the sad thing is that much of society does not hold people accountable for what they do. And they can always become someone, always blame someone or something else. I mean, if they do want to hold somebody accountable, it's someone they don't like, like the politicians. If they don't like the Republicans, they're going to hold the Republicans accountable. But, I mean, well, their own people, the Democrats, do their own misdeeds. And they just turn a blind eye to that. Double standards is what we're talking about. And that's the way most of our world operates. I mean, some people can get away with it and some people can't. And it's, it's, it's not a fair way of doing things. And sometimes those inequalities are expressed and put out there in public. All right, so let's face it. It's not their fault if someone left their keys in the car. I mean, think about that. You know, years ago, I think back in the 90s, they had this show called Bait Car. 
I mean, this is where the police set up a, a car. They left the keys in the car, and they, they watched people as come in and jump in the car and drive off. Then all of a sudden, the car would shut down and lock the doors, and they couldn't get out. And here, here comes the police right behind them, and they realize they're caught. But just listening to the logic of some of these criminals is hilarious, if not downright sad when you think about it. I mean, I mean, <laughs> look at it this way. We could mention a lot of politicians who claim that it's not their fault that we, our country has problems, but they turn around and say, re-elect me and we'll fix the problem. And when the reality is that they created the problem in the first place. And that just seems to be the way it has been. And the people of this country are not wising up to this fact that these people created the problem. Let's get new people in there. No, they keep reelecting the same people over and over and over. All right. Um, a big problem in our world is people placing blame on someone or something else rather than just fixing the problems. This is what we would expect of our politicians uh, and people on, out on the street. Fix your problem. You don't need that car. It's not yours. Leave it alone. But they keep doing it. And, and so our problem is many of us are trying to blame the woes of this country upon the current administration. And they are always claiming it's not their fault. Every administration in recent years has tried to blame the previous administration. And the truth is they are usually right in such a statement. But the problems facing this country are no different than any other country on this planet. The problem is sin and people tolerating sin and promoting sin. That's the problems in our world. I mean, promoting the, the sexual gratification, the lust of the flesh, and then, of course, the greed, the lust of the eyes, and then, of course, pride, I mean, supporting that. And those are the problems that this world faces, and it's every country, and this country is no different than any other country. See, it all began back when Adam tried to claim it was not his fault that he broke God's divine ordinance. I mean, this is how many people seem to justify their own actions and thus they do not feel any guilt or feel guilty of sin or breaking the law. I mean, God, I mean, God knew from the beginning the man was going to sin. He told us there in Romans 3, 23, all of sin and fall short of his glory. So knowing that man was going to sin, God made provisions. And he did this before the foundation of the world. I mean, before... He said, let there be light. He already had a plan. He knew it was going to happen. I mean, exactly when? I mean, he kind of left it up to man to make that choice. But eventually, Adam made that choice and sinned. So, God made the provisions to help man do something to rectify his situation. Why? Because God knew that sin would separate a soul from him. Our iniquities, our sins separate us from God, and we cannot continue in sin without being separated from God. And God knew that most sinners would try to place the blame on something else or someone else. And so that is the reason God not only gave us death through the sin of Adam, I mean, he gave us the judgment to come. I mean, so we, we have this to look forward to. And yes, he warns us time and time again, we will stand before God in judgment when this life is over. We will stand and give an account of our actions, of, our, uh, of everything concerning our life. Even our attitude, even our thoughts will be there before God and will be revealed. There will be nothing secret from God. It's all going to be made known to God in the judgment. And, and so uh, the only way to avoid a negative judgment would be to confess the divine nature of Christ or confess Jesus as Lord. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and being faithful to this Son, being faithful to the Son of God and doing what he says and living the way he wants you to live and living as God requires to the best of our ability. 
I mean, we, we can't be perfect, but that should be our goal. We should be striving for that. Jesus said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And this is a quotation from the Old Testament. And, and so we need to work on being the best that we can be, not just haphazardly, well, well maybe I'm good enough. No, we've got to work hard. We've got to apply diligence. That word diligence is used quite often in the New Testament, and it just means make the very best effort that you can and don't delay. It needs to be done. See, the problem is that most people do not want to live such a life. They would rather fulfill their lust and passions. And people need to learn to confess their sins instead of trying to shift the blame. And the conflict every person faces comes from within. I mean, James 1, 14 and 15 says it starts in our own lust. I mean, that's where it is and gives, it brings forth sin. And sin brings forth death. Galatians 5, 16 says that our soul and our spirit are at constant war. The flesh and the spirit are at constant war, always battling. I mean, Paul talked about this in Romans chapter 4. I mean, he says, my body says one thing, I say another thing, and sometimes the body wins out, sometimes the mind wins out. Uh, and so it's a conflict we all face. Temptations are there all the time, but whether we submit to those temptations and give in to those temptations, well, that's on us, folks. I mean, we, we can't blame anybody or anything. If we know God said, thou shalt not, and the temptation is there, well, God said, thou shalt not, but here's what I'm going to do right now. I mean, I mean, we have to face that. We're in that constant battle all the time. So if we want to have fellowship with God, we are commanded to obey the gospel of Christ, to enter this fellowship. Once we're added to the body of Christ, we do so through our repentance, our confession, and our baptism. And then our souls are added to the body of Christ. Does that make us perfect then? No, it does not. We're still going to make mistakes. We're still going to sin. But we have the avenue that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins. So if we want to maintain this fellowship with God, there's several things that we need to do. Like we read in 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, if we live in such a way that we are worthy of the gospel of Christ, to walk in a manner worthy of Christ. You know, Ephesians 4, 1 tells us that. And so that's what we need to do. If we're going to maintain this fellowship, we've got to be on good terms with God and doing the best of our ability to do what God wants us to do. So good fighting evil has always been part of the human story, and it will be until the end of time. And it seems maybe like evil is beginning to triumph at the present time, and people are looking at that and saying, why has it become so evil? Well, the scripture says evil or people are going to wax worse. They're going to get worse and worse. And we just have to remember that Jesus, the lamb, is going to have the ultimate victory. Now, just because Jesus is going to have the ultimate victory does not mean that we do not need to strive to be the best we can be. Even when evil is surrounding us, we can't give in to evil. We cannot give in because that's just Satan working to keep us out of heaven. And so all those, while we may be on the side of Jesus, my, while we may be in his army, while we may be in his camp, we're going to experience this ultimate victory. But there's a, a little tiny word which has great significance. That is if. If we are faithful if we love his appearing, if we continue on, if we don't give in to the sins of this world, I mean, if we are faithful, I mean, that little tiny word, I mean, if. <clears throat> I mean, so, folks, what we need to do is everyone just needs to stop blaming others. And really, we just need to acknowledge our own sins. Don't worry about someone else's sin. I mean, you have time to talk to them about it later, but get yourself right with God first. I mean, that, that's where you need to be. That's what you need to do. 
Get yourself right with God and stop blaming society. Stop blaming your spouse. Stop blaming your friends. Stop blaming <clears throat> just about anything. If you do wrong, folks, that is on you. And that's the only way God is going to look at it. If you commit sin, God is going to accuse you of sin and not allow you into heaven. So you're going to have to make that choice. And you're going to have to make that decision to stop blaming other things and just go ahead and acknowledge, I have sinned. I mean, we read that in the scripture. Several people came out and acknowledged, yes, I have sinned. And so we need to do the same thing. And so consider these thoughts. Uh, it's, it's, that's going to be our lesson for today. Uh, think about these things. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.